Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, my name is Justin. This is this is Derek, and we are podcast Derek and Justin's epic adventure. Welcome, welcome everybody. Today we're going to we're we're basically delving into Stephen Erickson's uh, Malazam <laughs> books of the fallen series. Uh, we're starting with the first book, Gardens of the Moon. Um, but before we get into all that, we would just like to briefly introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Justin, like I said, uh, longtime friend of Mr. Derek here. We grew, actually grew up in the same town. He was actually the one who introduced me to fantasy books being the, uh, Wheel of Time series, which I recently just finished. Really looking forward to delving into other fantasy works, other fantasy offers, authors, and getting to talk about them with a good buddy. For sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to read this too. Um, it's a book, a book series that I've seen a lot about, but know absolutely nothing about. Uh, and that just makes me excited to read it going in completely blind, not having any expectations. Um, yeah, like Justin said, we've known each other since seventh grade, um, which I think puts that around 1997 or 98, somewhere around there. Um, it's 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 been a while. Um, and, you know, obviously, like life happens in that time frame. I wouldn't say that we ever stopped being friends, but um, we kind of went our separate ways for a while, um, families and uh, living in different towns now. Um, but yeah, we recently reconnected over wheel of time, just in finishing that series. And we've talked a lot about that. Um, just texting back and forth. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess just as far as my reading history, always, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't really know why, but, um, predominantly I've always read science fiction and fantasy type books. Um, I like, the escape it gives you, um, you know, a, a different world, whatever, it, whatever it is. And I think the, the earliest things I can remember reading would be Goosebumps, starting probably with Goosebumps, and then um, Animorphs, and then Redwall, um, those series. And then, yeah, about the time Justin and I met, uh, another uh, classmate was was reading Wheel of Time and. It's, I think it's always been book covers that have drawn me to books. And I, I saw this book he was reading and it was huge. And I saw the cover and I just thought it was really cool. And I asked him about it and I started reading it. And then I guess, yeah, I don't really remember exactly where uh, I recommended it to you. But it was, a, I guess, a, a long lasting journey. I didn't finish The Wheel of Time until... And it's been a year and a half now, maybe since I finally, finally wrapped it up. But I, I wanted to make sure I finished it before the TV show came out. Yeah, I, I recently just finished, like literally, like three weeks ago, finished the Wheel of Time. But it's funny because you, you introduced me to that series back in seventh grade, and I'm just now finishing it. But I realized that, like you know as I made it to the beginning of the sixth book, <laughs> Lord of Chaos, uh, you know, girls, cars, money, job, it just, it took a very big back burner. And I'm super appreciative that I just decided to like, hey, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to read it all. And like, now I just want more, like, give me more fantasy. Yeah, I can agree with all of that. I know there was a pretty large gap for me too, um, from wherever I left off. You know, I've I've read the first three or four books, you know, four or five times, and only made it all the way through the series once. But things come up, and um, but eventually, yeah, we finished, and yeah, I'm definitely excited to read another large and extensive book series with uh, with a, a lot of depth to it 
yeah, lots of world building from what I understand. <clears throat> a lot of like character arcs and character development. <clears throat> also, a quick side note, I was reading that he is making a sequel to this series. Like, I think he's like a he's already like about ready to release the next book or something like that. I'd I'd have to dig into it more, but huh. I just thought I not interesting. Like, I guess enough of the fan base was like, "Yeah, we want more. Give us more." So I'm really excited to delve into uh, the Malazan series. Yeah, and I, I think more than anything, I'm I'm excited to to do this with you to read. Uh, you know, a book with a, a good friend, um, even though we're not sitting in class together anymore. It's, you know, there's some distance between us, but to be on the same page with somebody and be like, oh man, you know, did you get here yet? You know, holy cow, what did you think? Um, having having those moments together, I think will be fun and, and to be able to, to share that with other people will be cool. 100%. And to be able to share like, you know, even different viewpoints, different perspectives, different like <clears throat> understanding of the author's written interpretation of what they're trying to describe us is so cool to be able to collaborate with other people who are reading the same thing at the same time. Um, so, which kind of segues into a little bit of of where we want this podcast to go. We want it. We want it to be like a almost a reaction to the information that we are reading, you know, Hey, let's read a chunk. Let's talk about that chunk. Let's analyze it. Let's see if we can break it down. Um, and just kind of, you know, not banter, but just throw each other's ideas off of each other and, and see, uh, see what we make of it, see what we can deduce. Yeah, and I, I hope there's things that uh, we disagree on, you know, not that it needs to be an argument, but that we have different viewpoints on things, um, maybe what something means or how we interpret it. Um, but I also hope that there's things that we see eye to eye as well. Oh, I'm sure there's going to be many of those moments. Yeah, uh, but like you said, as far as some, some goals, um, really, we're just doing this for fun. Uh, you know, we don't, I don't anyways, have, you know, some fancy setup for doing this. It's just a, a phone and some earbuds. Um, it's, it's, I guess, low budget, but it's all in the sake of fun. So hopefully the audio quality is still pretty good. I know, Justin, you've got a computer and um, we'll be relying on you to do some editing and, and that type of stuff. Um, but we don't want... I think what we don't want is is people coming in and you know ruining it for us, the book series for us, or uh, maybe somebody else who's in a similar spot as us is like, oh, I've kind of heard about the series and I want to read it, and you know maybe they stumble across us and they can kind of follow along and um, provide their input. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't want to see it get ruined for anybody else. So um, it's it's all for fun. And we all just want to have a good time and enjoy a good book. Right. As well as, <clears throat> you know, welcoming any potential readers who are at this point or even just slightly ahead of us who want to wait for us to like catch up to them. Uh, you know, please feel free to follow along as we go, um, make comments, uh, talk about what we're talking about, add input, w whatever the case is, like we're open. <clears throat> yeah for sure you know give us feedback if there's that there are, i know there will be things that we can do better things that we can improve on but we're both new to this um and i i think i can speak for both of us we're both excited to do this and get it up and running here finally we've been talking about it since um i think since november when when you came down to watch wheel of time with me um we kind of I kind of had this idea popped into my head, you know, and then I knew you were coming down. I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta ask Justin about this and and see if he's in in for it. And luckily, you were. So, um, I think you and I are both adults. We're gonna take uh, honest feedback. You know, if it's criticism, we just, you know, neither of us are looking for anything nasty. We're not professional podcasters. We're just a couple of newbies uh, dabbling our toes here. 
right. looking to, you know, get into fantasy podcasting as well as, you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, with any type of podcaster building some type of, of following and fan base and, you know, uh, long-term goal, like after we finish the, the Malazan series, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. <clears throat> Malazan. Malazan series, uh, Steven Erickson, we would like to do the same type of formatting for other fantasy books, whether it's, you know, completed series, whether it's just a trilogy, you know, just a single book, hopefully just expand this beyond large high fantasy and delve into literally everything and everything, all of it and everything. Yeah, I, I guess I'm, I always kind of had it in my head that I think it would be fun to do, um, you know, things that uh, neither of us have read or um, maybe it's been so long since we've read it, we don't remember anything or, you know, maybe one of us has read read whatever we chose, but not the other. And, um, you know, we can kind of feed off those first time reactions right. for the other person. Right, Because that's, I mean, that's the whole essence of the podcast is to be able to capture real time so to speak uh how the we are viewing or interpreting these authors works definitely uh, anything else you can think of to fit in in here i mean just no spoilers please like let us enjoy i know that you touched on that a little bit but like let us enjoy reading the series um but by all means we welcome you guys to follow along add to our conversation in any way shape or form just please do not spoil it yeah that's i think that's probably the biggest point is you know um we're not gonna be spoiling anything for somebody who's already read the series um or you know on the flip side of the coin somebody who just I, to me i guess it wouldn't make sense that somebody would listen to a podcast without at least reading along but maybe there's people out there who listen to these things for book series or you know whatever it is um you know to kind of get the gist of the story without actually reading it um you know where, where that would if if somebody was listening to an episode down the line before they started reading the book you know there's obviously going to be spoilers then but um, you know, at least as we're going along week by week or whatever time frame it is, two weeks, you know, I, I know you and I both have other commitments in, in life and things come up, but I think we both know we want to be consistent with this, but um, yeah, we don't want, we don't want things spoiled for sure. 100%. No spoilage. We could get started. We can dive into... Uh... The prologue of Gardens of the Moon. Which is aptly named the prologue. Right. <laughs> I did find it unusual, like the, the uh, God, what is that called? The, the thing in the front. Oh, uh, uh, index or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. Dramatis personae, personae, like... I don't speak Latin, but I assume it means something along the lines of important people or notable people, something along those lines. Yeah, I wasn't expecting everything to be in the front. So, like, as I was, you know, getting to the prologue, you know, like, of course, like, I'm an artist. I really enjoy looking at these maps. And then when I was done with these maps, I'm looking at, like, this, you know, Dramatis Personae and... Uh, I, I didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know what to make of it because like I hadn't been introduced to the characters, but like, I'm super thankful for it. Even after leave, like reading the prologue. Yeah. I, I know you said you have read the prologue four or five times and I've, I've only read it twice. Um, but before I did read the prologue, I, I read through the uh, index or what have you. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, more used to something like that at the end of the book, like is found in Wheel of Time. Uh, wasn't expecting that in the beginning, but I think it, it did. You know, what we we came across three named characters in the prologue. 
if I remember right. Two. Um, I think it's. I guess one. Yeah. One of them wasn't. I guess physically there. They were talking about the emperor, whoever it was. Somebody was allegedly killed. Right. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Um. Yeah. But we have we have uh, Genos. Yep. I'm not sure if you pronounce that differently. Nope. I, that's how I had it. Genos. Um, who is uh, at least in the prologue. 12 years old um but looking at the index it says that uh they are a noble born officer in the empire so i guess that tells me one of two things either this prologue takes place in the past or um this must be some magnificent kid that they're a military officer at the age of 12 yeah uh, i also noticed in the uh the Persona thing in the beginning that he's got a sister. He's got a sister, uh, Tavor, who is the middle child, and then Felizin, Felizin, youngest sister, and then Gamut is a house guard and veteran of House Paran in Unta. The city of Unta, which I believe in the prologue is where the empire or the emperor Dasem Ultor was killed. No, maybe not. No, never mind. I'm mixing that up with something else. I, I think we both will probably have uh, the book in front of us as we do these just to refer oh. back and forth because it, it does look like there's going to be a ton of characters in this uh i imagine this series but i mean even just looking in this first book which is 600 pages and we've got if, well, how many pages of, of named characters here About three four pages of, of named characters that we haven't even met we haven't even been introduced to them at all and i mean based on you know some of the things that like i've read about the series is that a lot of people find his work frustrating because it's so rich. Like sometimes you have to go back and, and take a second or third read about what he's trying to describe. Like, for example, Mox Vane here in the prologue. Like, I thought he was literally describing some type of demon perched on top of the, the, the Mock Tower, Mox Hold, uh, which it didn't make any sense compared to like the rest of the prologue. I'm like, why is there just this demon just chilling up here? Like what are you doing? You know? But then it was like the third read in, I'm like a weather vane, it, Justin, it's a weather vane with the North, South, East and West thing. Yeah. I know we had talked the other day about this and you had mentioned that. And, and I had had, I, I, the first time reading that I was like, I kind of picked up on it some, but I was questioning it. I'm like, Oh, is that really what that is? Um, and I, I just wasn't sure, but I had a pretty good feeling. That's what it was. But yeah, just, uh, the description of it, it feels like it should be obvious, but it, it wasn't right. At least uh, to you or I anyways. Exactly. <clears throat> I also thought it was really cool and I'm trying to like find this in the book. But in the beginning here, like after the dramatic personae, personae, uh, there's this like this little, little, I guess quote maybe written scripture type thing that you could interpret it. And I wanted to read this. I find this so cool. Even before I even read the pre prologue, now these ashes have grown grown cold. We open the old book. These oil stained pages recount the tales of the fallen. A frayed empire, words without warmth, the hearth has ebbed, its gleam and life spark are not are but memories against dimming eyes. What cast my mind, what hew my thoughts as I open the book of the fallen and breathe deep the scent of history? There's a question mark after that. Listen then to these words carried on that breath. These tales are the tales of us all. Again, yet again, 
We are history relived, and that is all. Without end, that is all. I loved reading this because, like, not only did I get a sense of, like, this is something you as the reader will read about as in, like, some type of, like, historical past event, almost kind of like a like a history textbook or something like that. Um, it just kind of, like, opens it up to, like, all of these questions. Like, what are the fallen? What is the fallen? What 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 is going to take place that is pot- potentially like an intrinsic evaluation of of oneself it was just it was just a really cool way to start a series you know like oh this is this is epic like this is so cool to read like here's just like a little taste uh, a synopsis of a synopsis of hey this is this is there's going to be some reflection there may not be reflection, but you know, I, yeah, it was just, it was cool. Sometimes it's kind of hard to explain, but. You, you have a lot deeper thoughts on that than I do. When it, it more specifically, when you just read that, my, my mind instantly uh, thought the wheel weaves is the wheel wills. Um, even though that's a completely different book series, but that's really what it reminded me of. Um, and I guess just a, a much more paraphrased paraphrased version you can definitely see where you're going with the you know the wheel weaves is the wheel wills um type thing um yeah i just it really it just for whatever reason just spoke to me uh you know like just like a very good use of being able to draw in the reader in a way that it's like hey like there's some there's some stuff that's going to go down like you're gonna enjoy it, or it's, it's hooking you in before page one, even. Right, right, and you know, with the way that the prologue has gone, like I'm, I'm very, very anxious and curious as to see like what takes place throughout this book, connecting dots, people, places, to things, to events. Like this is what I really enjoyed about previous fantasy reads was being able to just kind of like, aha those eureka moments of like, I get it. Like, that is cool. That was clever. That was witty. That was smart, you know? Definitely. I also, like, going back to your 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 comment on history, Year of Burns Sleep. I'm curious as to, like, what is, what is Burns Sleep? I, I had the same question. Like, are we... Are we... It's like, is it a season or, you know, I'd have to think we're going to hear something, you know, find something out about that. Uh, right. And, you know, that's a shed some light. very beginning of before you even read the prologue, you know, like. So, you know, I'm assuming that, like, this is probably just the starting point of the timeline. Right. Like it says the last year. Of Emperor Kav- Kalinved's reign. So this is the year that he stops being the, you know, Malazan Empire or Emperor. So I think it's just a starting point, really. But I'm curious as to see, like, what, what, why is it labeled burn sleep? And why are there two different, why are there two different ways of, calculating time or calendaring time yeah there's there's a lot of questions as far as that goes but i think you know this this prologue i mean it, the span of time it seems to cover to to me was you know only a matter of minutes really right um you know we've got Genos up on top of this wall or up in this tower watching watching the city burn um as it's raided and looted and pillaged um you know just this 12 year old kid watching this without seemingly a care in the world and uh you know some sort of military official appears and starts talking to him and uh you know genos has this 
what sounds like reliable information because it catches this military uh, guard that he knows or suspects this. Um, and, and to me, that's really what just throws this whole thing off. You know, why, why does a 12 year old know what he knows? Where did he hear it? How did he get this information? And if, you know, if, if it is correct, what is he going to do with it? Right. And even, you know, the commander or officer that you, he, he doesn't have a name. He's just associated with bridge builders based on like a, I don't think it was a sigil. It was like a, like some type of brooch holding his cape or cloak together of uh, a bridge with some emeralds alongside of it. So like Ganoz was able to identify this as a bridge burner, which tells me that he's familiar or at least knows of bridge burner, what exactly a bridge burner is outside of the obvious we have yet to unveil. Right. Well, he's, I mean, we know he, Ganoz is a noble, so presumably he's got a good education. Right. And was probably taught this stuff. And his father is discussing trade with the fist. I'm not exactly sure what the fist is uh, in Mox Hold um, before this commander, this bridge burner, approaches him. So I'm curious, like, is his father, like, you know, you know the emperor's dead, right? So, like, is he... Is he fighting for the previous empire or is he negotiating on behalf of of this surly or lacine character who comes in shortly after this Gano's unnamed commander interaction sorry i was uh paging through my book here to kind of make sure i'm in the same place <laughs> as you <laughs> it's hard not that i wasn't listening but yeah there's you know, even in just a few pages, there's a lot that is, you know, I feel like you know, there's a lot of things that are being set up already. Yeah. And yeah, this, uh, the, the scene, um, or Surly, somebody changing their name, I guess. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm not sure where my thought was going exactly. Yet. No, it's all good. I mean, it's 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 a prologue, right? Like we have no history prior to this. We don't know what happens after this because that'll be next episode. Um, so just taking the information that we have, you know, it's so little. I almost feel like it. You know, I'm struggling to talk about it because it's very just like, hey, there's this 12 year old boy of noble nobility. He is at the tippy top tower on this ginormous cliff overlooking the city of Malaz. On this, you know, from what I, I gathered, which based on some of the sketching that I did from the descriptions of the prologue, Malaz sounds like it's an island of some type, kind of like off the coast of the mainland. And he's watching, he's watching the mouse quarter, which is, from what I understand, the poorest type of quadrant of the city. And as he's approached by this unnamed commander of the bridge burners, this commander was immediately able to identify Gnose as nobility and even makes a comment about, hey, like, it must be nice to be noble, eh? Oh, the pure blood. I pure pure blood, term. right. Yes, thank you. Yeah, this, uh, the Lacine um, character, I guess, gives us our first, uh, at least in, in the story, without looking at the map or anything, gives us our first named uh, nation or um, country uh, of Napam. Um, and the word Lacine apparently means throne master. So uh, this Lacine, she must think pretty highly of herself to title herself as such. Yeah, and even going back to the person, person, dramatis personae, 
when you look at the emperor's name in here, just grab it. Um, it says, in the emperor's time, Emperor Kellenved, the founder of the empire, assassinated by Lacine. And then in the prologue, uh, the commander and Ganoz have this conversation about Desem Ultor, who was the first sword of the empire. So, like, essentially, Emperor Kellenved's right hand man is what I'm interpreting that was killed outside what was called Yagahatan, uh, which means seven cities. So, I don't know if like Lacine killed him too, but it seems that Lacine is an, uh, an, a usurper. It also seems not very concerned about the city burning. Um, Which makes me think know. it's a siege of some kind. So, like, is Gano's father kind of going back to like that question? Like, is Gano's father like, is he in cahoots with Lacine, or is he like, like, what's he doing? Because like the whole interaction with Gano's and Lacine is pretty. It, it doesn't exist. Like, she doesn't even interact with this twelve-year-old boy. He's just kind of there. He's just there, and all of her interactions are with the commander. Um, but she she is essentially ordering him, who you know also has one of his other, uh, I guess, subordinates there as well, who is also unnamed, but he just happens to have. I think it was a fiddle or some type of instrument mounted on his back as he was approached, um, was told to contain the problem in the mouse, which I feel like it has something to do with like, cause like, uh, uh, Surly slash Lucene, uh, is making, like comments about magery or magic or sorcery of some kind. It doesn't really like describe what it is outside of that comment by the scene. And that uh, the, the, the magic wielders are inexperienced and have no control. Right. Also when they're, when in the prologue, when the city of Malaz is being, uh, described like Gnoz is having trouble seeing the the city burning because of all the magery in the air and all the smoke and stuff. So like, like what's really going on? You know? Yeah, I kind of you know when I was reading that, I pictured it you know like a really like dark red sky and you know these black formidable you know clouds. Um, just you know like a really nasty thunderstorm almost it's kind of you know when i was reading that's kind of what i envisioned yeah um i envisioned similar to like you know thunderstorm but like with like greens and blues and like really kind of like desaturated cool colors um yeah i don't know why why it went there but I just thought it was really cool just thinking about the perspective from Gnose, uh just standing up on, you know, this battlefront wall, right, which is, I think, uh, was described as 60 feet to the cliff's edge, and then the cliff's edge to the ground was like 80 meters or feet or something like that. So, like, just having this really cool that. advantage vantage point. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I was kind of trying to work that math out in my head. I think it, arm spans, I think, was the unit of measurement. And so, I don't know, I guess my thought, was, I don't know how long an arm span is, but if you spread your arms out, I guess it's, you know, for for me, it would be probably about six feet. Right. That's what I would say. So, so six feet times 80 plus the other you know the height of the wall it's it's a pretty big distance yeah 
Far, yeah. You, you're going to die if you fall. Yeah, that's a good splat. Right. That is a cursed splat. But, yeah, I mean, it, I just, I, th- I thought it was cool how, like, you're able to really get a sense of scale uh, from this prologue, as well as, like, you know, there's there's definitely some mystery going on. Like, what what is actually happening? Like, what's going down? Like, some type of siege of something. But like, where where or what are the you know the alliances of the very few characters that we have? Because going back to that interaction with Lacine, who is actually flanked by what was described as the claws. Uh, which I think are assassins, essentially. That's kind of what, from what I get them too. But you know, like again, kind of you know, maybe stereotypical uh, fantasy trope, right? Just the 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 faceless hood would you know, like can't even see past, like no light inside of the hood type creatures, or you know humans or whatever but also the fact that like what like when we were talking the other day lacine is blue like her skin is blue like what like i'm curious as to like where what what is that is this like like are these you know humanoids are they humans are they like what type of creatures am i about to like i'm really excited to yeah it was it was a detail that was but kind of subtle, I thought. You know, quick. That you're almost supposed to read it and kind of not notice it. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's, it's funny because, I, and I'm, you know, I'm sure you caught this because I think it's something that like the writer wanted the reader to know in the prologue, but Surly and this unnamed commander exchange, uh, I don't, know, I don't want to call him threat, but more kind of like, like the commander is kind of questioning Lacine, and I think he said he said something along the lines of like, your laws aren't anything, your laws won't be anything, something something sorcery, you know. Let's see if I can't find what he said. Uh, I think I might have found it. The man grimaced, so I've heard. You must be feeling confident in the Emperor's absence. He's not the only one who remembers you as nothing more than a serving wench down in the old quarter. I take it the gratitude's washed off long since. I guess that's maybe part of the exchange, but I don't know if that's the exact quote you're, you were looking for. Oh, it's down a little bit further. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your laws, surly, they won't work. And when the Emperor returns, he'll quash your prohibition of sorcery, and you can be certain of that. Yeah, that's that's the one that I'm talking about, which makes me think, like, is the Emperor dead? Like, what does he mean by the Emperor return? Does he mean, like, the people, his followers, like, the Emperor himself? Like, I'm convinced that he's dead based on, you know, the the personae thing in the beginning, the dramatis personae, because it's listed him as killed by Lucine. So I can only take that, like, Maybe he was like she was the mistress of this em- emperor, like old wench. I don't know if that's just like a name calling or if like that's actually what she was before her current status. So like, yeah, there's just there's just a lot of mystery, which I'm digging. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, there's a couple quotes that I really liked, and that's. Um, you know, sometimes I like the interactions with the characters more than um, the, you know, the scenery built up around it. But just to get into the, the head of the characters, and, and I'll read one of them here, but the, uh, the bridge burner, um, he's talking to Gnos and he says, every decision you make can change the world. The best life is one the gods don't notice. You want to live free, boy? Live quietly. So this tells me that this, you know, this commander, he's probably seen some pretty horrific shit. You know, he, um, you kind of get the sense that, you know, he wants, well, he says it, he wants to be a soldier. And there's there's another quote a little bit later that I'd like to, that I'll read. Um, but 
this bridge burner knows what it is to be a, a soldier. And Gnose is just a, you know, even as, as a noble, he's just a young, dumb kid. He doesn't know any better. Um, he doesn't know what it's like to stab somebody, you know, in close combat and watch him die right in front of your eyes. He doesn't know what it's like to see, you know, your buddies killed around you. Um, you know, he's, he's seen the brutality of it all. Well, right. And I mean, you know, Gnos being of noble blood or high blood, right? Like, how often are those those families going to war? I mean, they may be going to war, war but they're not, like, battling. They're not on the front lines, you can assume. So, like, <clears throat> this uh, bridge burner, this commander of some, some uh, regards is probably lowborn he probably had to work his way up to being a commander so that would tell me that he's probably spent his entire life a soldier he's been a grunt and he's yeah like you said he's worked his way up to where he's at and he's probably done it all and seen it all and i really get that sense you know and here's the other quote that i like but gano says one day i'll be a soldier the man grunted only if you fail at all else, son. Taking up the sword is the last act of a des- of desperate men. Mark my words and find yourself a more worthy dream. And really, if you're noble, you know, finding a more worthy dream, you know, you've got the silver spoon in your mouth. Should be pretty attainable. Should be pretty attainable, yeah, you know, compared to, you know, the gutter rat who, you know, grown up piss poor. Being a soldier is probably about the best thing you could hope for, you know, you more than likely you're getting fed you've got a place to sleep right you know you might be you might have to see some horrible things do some horrible things but you're you know in a sense you're taken care of yeah i couldn't i couldn't agree more i thought that was a really a really like cool way to end the prologue um but at the same time like I almost felt a little disappointed by it. Like, that's all the advice you're going to give? Like, that seems pretty obvious. But, you know, to a 12-year-old boy of noble nobility, right? Like, I go back to, and this is probably really lame, I go back to, like, Princess Jasmine and Aladdin, right? Like, she wants to go out and see what it's like to be on the streets because she's always lived in wealth and in a palace, you know? Like, we have no idea how Gano's parents were. Clearly, his dad takes him everywhere, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's, it's, he's always surveyed, so to speak, or, you know, like helicopter parenting. I, I random thoughts as I'm talking. <laughs> that's, I think that's okay. Um, I don't know. That I guess, I mean, as far as on my end goes, I, I didn't really have any other notes or any other discussion points, um, you know, to, to go over. I'm not sure what you had. Um, I mean, I guess some of the things that I wrote down were like, what is a fist? I know that like, a fist could be like an you know fifty people in an army, but like what is what is the fist in this prologue that his dad is talking to? You know? Um what is Gano's father discussing? Something about trade, but how is that in relation to the mouse quarter and what appears to be a siege? Yeah, I'm sure we will find that out. I, I'm not sure. To me, yeah, I, you know, I think you're probably right. It's probably, uh, you know, some number of, of people, military unit or whatever. But that's where that's where my mind would tend to go to as well. Yeah, and then also like I guess you know one of the bigger ones that we maybe we touched on a little bit, but like, why is the bridge burner commander? Why is he so defiant of the scene? and questioning her laws, but then obeys her orders. So, like, clearly she thinks that, you know, he's on her side or 
you know, in her army, you know, loyal to her in some way, shape or form. But like, what, what, like, where is this character going to go when he's implying what he's implied about her laws against sorcery? Yeah, that's really, I did not pick up on that. Yeah. Um, you know, that he was a little bit defiant, but yeah, then was willing to do the bidding. Right. Like he commanded that guy with the, the music or the, you know, uh, instrument on his back. So he commanded him to go like resolve whatever in the mouse quarter, uh, which had something to do with sorcery and witches. So like the things that I'm kind of taking away is like, you know, uh, magic, uh, humanoid esque creatures um uh some some type of political hierarchy as well as like the you know the gods like what is it about the gods like why is does this commander tell Ganos to do something that will hide him from the eyes of the gods so I, and I can't remember if they said God or gods, but you know, it's it's definitely like it's not monotheistic. Uh, it was gods, plural, not gods. Uh, so that tells me that it's kind of like a maybe like getting a little bit of inspiration from like Roman and Greek cultures with the the multi multi god type thing. So. Not only does Gnose have to, or this bridge burner implying to Gnose that, hey, you need to find something that is not going to be shown to the eyes of gods of however many things, you know, like that's, it's a lot to hide from. Yeah. If, if you can, if you can escape notice <laughs> at all. Right. Man, I feel like I've gotten so much off my chest. I don't have any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, we can kind of wrap up then. So next time, uh, I guess we don't have a definitive timeline yet, but uh, you know, hopefully next week we can we can do this again. We can, you know, chat um, about what we've read. But uh, we will be getting into pale which if I'm being honest, I think is a pretty badass name for a city. I don't know why. I just, I think it sounds really cool. Pale. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, like to me, it sounds like a metal band name. Like that's the vibe I get. Um, so I'm excited to get into that and see what it's about and, and see what else we find out, learn. And I'm sure there's going to be a ton of characters that we're introduced to and probably going to be, all kinds of stuff thrown at us and our heads will probably be spinning here trying to keep it all straight. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's, that's how I'm feeling. I mean, but I, I being the type of person that I am, I will probably reread this chapter at least two or three times. And try to, <laughs> I think, cause like my mind thinks in storyboards, you know? So like, I just think in like panels. So being able to like, you know, draw along with reading kind of helps my visual brain understand what is happening. Um, so I will probably read it once, read it twice, and then go back and try to pick out some imagery that really stands out. So, And I think we'll have 50-ish pages to read and dissect and discuss. So I think there'll be probably quite a bit more um, to talk about than we talked about tonight. Oh, for sure. And we've got the introduction out of the way. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about doing that. So we can jump, just dive in to the content. That, that's true. That'll, that'll save a few minutes. Yeah, just a couple. <laughs> uh, cool. So go ahead. I was just going to maybe suggest that you let people know where we can be found. Yeah, you're one step ahead of me, bud. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you could check us out on Facebook. We are currently making the page for that, uh, but we'll let you know where specifically 
on Facebook on our next episode. But you can catch us on Instagram. Our a handle Instagram handle is DJ Epic Q. Search for us. Give us a like. Follow. Tell your friends. And also, I think we'll be um, putting this podcast out through Anchor. I don't remember everywhere that pushes out to. I think Spotify was one of them. And I know you were going to do iTunes as well. So um, leave us some feedback. Good, bad, otherwise, you know, let us know what we could do better, what you liked. Uh, anything would be appreciated. Like we said at the beginning, we're, we're new at this, but we're eager and, um, we want to do a good job, but I, I think it's more important that we have fun doing it. Um, and engage with the community, right? Like if you want to chime in with the conversation that you just listened to, uh, please, by all means, let's do it. Like more people that we can converse about what's happening, the more that that conversation could help out or influence a reader looking to start the series. For sure. I guess sayonara, peace out next time. Take care, everybody.